Good morning, everybody. <laughs> We're in the middle of the Australian summer, so yes, there's going to be some flies. It is so lovely to see you today. We're out here in beautiful Melbourne town on the Yarra River, which you can see over there, working with the 85 mil. The Z 85 mil 1.8. There's a man with his microphone on the Yarra River. They do rowing. Stuff like that happens sometimes. So today we're going to be talking about this. And this is the 85 mil 1.8 Z mounted S lens for the Nikon Zs, the Z50, the Z6, and the Z7, which is what we're shooting on today. So let's go and find out how good is this lens. <laughs> and uh, sorry about the flight. So the 85mm 1.8. I suppose the first question everybody would ask is how does it compare to the 85mm f 1.4? Now I have that with me today. I'm going to do a separate comparison video about those two. Hundred percent. We can see that's lovely and sharp on the back of this gentleman's head, hair follicles, water. The water through here detail is good and that color rendition is lovely that's overexposed i would say i'm shooting manual or i shoot manual i'd probably bring it down to in there somewhere but that's it otherwise i'm pretty happy i might do a little bit of vignetting because i like i like a, a, a little bit of vignetting now here we get representation of the bokeh the focus points here if we come into 100 percent we can see the fall off let's let it draw that there we go we've drawn that this is beautiful and sharp in here. We can see this lovely detail through here. And um, yeah, beautiful, sharp. And then this is lovely, smooth, silky fall off back to here. Really nice, really nice. And we can see again what's in focus through the here, through this plane. And then it just falls off super silky. Now I'm just going to bring the exposure down a little bit. No penalty for doing that. We can pull the highlights to get a little bit more. I'm shooting flat, so I'll just throw a tiny bit of color in there. So we'll ca copy those settings, have a look at the skulls again. Yeah, probably a little bit dark for my money, actually. Bring this down a bit, a little bit of contrast. Oh, yeah. Of course, we believe, and engineering says it's so, that the Z mount is a superior mount. So optically, we're getting some great results. And somebody gave me a really good idea around why and how it is that the Z is so sharp. And it's, imagine you get a, a flashlight and the closer that you take that beam of light to the wall, the closer you move the torch to the wall, the sharper the edges, the sharper it becomes as it gets closer to the wall. So in other words, closer we can get the light coming from the lens to the sensor, the sharper it's going to be. But that seems logical to me. I'm not a scientist. Please tell me if that's uh, not the right idea. But it seems to make sense to me. And if that's the case, well, obviously the Z mount is the closest. The back of the lens element is the closest to the sensor. So they're very, very sharp. So when we're comparing F with Z, you're not comparing apples with apples. They're two completely different beasts. And this is something I cannot emphasize enough. Z lenses are just different. The engineering is different. The results are different. This is how it is. When shooting with the 85mm, you might say to yourself, well, it's a fixed lens and it's not that useful to me. And the reality is, with cameras like the megapixels that we have today, you can actually go to crop mode, to DX mode, and still get a great result. 
on both the Z6 and the Z7, you can shoot in 4K in both full frame and DX. So there is no penalty whatsoever for shooting 4K. You go from an 85mm up to a 127mm. I think that's right, 127 and a half. Let's just round it off to 130, which you can see here on the screen. I'm showing you the difference between the two. Now that's something that's super useful from a video perspective. You've got a significantly longer lens there. The camera handles very, very harsh, very, very harsh light. And there's no chromatic aberration here. Just waiting for it to draw. That looks extraordinarily sharp through there. There's a mountain of light coming in. We can bring that exposure down a bit. Looks fabulous. Make it a bit more crunchy if we want with the contrast. That looks great. I really like that shot. Really like that shot. And we can see this is at f. This is at f 2.2. So the depth of field really shouldn't be that long. But we've got this looking great right on the edge. I mean, right on the edge here. Look, look how good that's looking. We are right in the corner of this lens, and this looks spectacular. Through here, spectacular. Even down to here, very, very sharp. All through here, and this is only 2.2, and it's not that far away from me. So, sharpness is crazy. That is crazy. I've got to be honest. Very impressed by that. That's a keeper. And then, of course, when it comes to stills on the Z7, you can go to DX mode, you can get your roughly 130mm lens and you can still get 19.5 megapixels, which is more than enough to cover the majority of situations. Obviously the crop's a bit more, the, the megapixel loss is a bit more extreme on the Z6, but you can choose to do it if you want to. Because let's face it, how many situations do we really need high megapixels? So remembering that these lenses can be used in DX mode is just another advantage that they bring us. Now, just to show off the ridiculous power of the dynamic range here in the Z7, this is dark and we can bring that up whilst keeping the highlights under control. It's pretty impressive that from what appeared to be darkness, you can bring, bring this to the table. Now, stretching your dynamic range loses you a bit of color. So I throw a little bit of that back in, plus I'm continuing to shoot with a flat profile. This also doesn't feel perfectly vertical although light poles are often are not vertical sometimes it's hard to find what is actually vertical yeah better i think so that is the 85 mil 64 iso let's and again we're, we're wide open so we can see that this all through here because this is at a bit of a distance this is in focus this is in focus up here well, i mean well, here let's go to 100 percent you can even make out the texture on that sign focus is very good through here and of course it's going to start to fall off because we're only at 1.8 and clearly the items in the background, the church and so on, are falling further and further out of focus. Lovely. Looks The sharp parts look very sharp. They look very good. And let's talk about when. When do you mostly use an 85mm? Well, I quite enjoy using it as a street photography lens. That might seem strange to some people, I'm not sure. Just as an aside, it's gonna be 43 degrees today. That's very hot. I think it's like 110. Yes, I love using them as a streetscape lens because you can get some great bokeh, bokeh results. I think it works super well. Obviously, they're a great portrait lens and the difference in bokeh between a 1.4 and a 1.8 is pretty negligible. So I think until Nikon get that sort of lens out, if you're keen to have an 85 native, well, this one's going to work super well. Of course, you can watch my video here where I have adapted the F 85mm 1.4, which also works really, really well on the Z. So you can go either way. If you have one of those and you want to wait for the Z 85, I think it'll be a 1.2, not a 1.4. You can watch my video here where I basically say, I think the 1.4 has been superseded by the 1.8 because the engineering of the mount is so awesome. And if you look at what both Nikon and Canon are doing, and if you look at their roadmaps, you can see neither of them have 1.4 prime lenses. 
really interesting, isn't it? There's just no talk about it and they don't exist. So it says to me, they don't need them anymore. They can successfully and as easily as making a 1.4 now make a 1.2 and the 1.8s have become what the 1.4s were. But they're even better quality and they're even cheaper and they're even lighter. So this is what these new mounts are giving us. An interesting question is, is the engineering of the Sony E-mount, which of course is the oldest of the three, does the engineering of that mount offer the same advantages? And looking at their lens mix, perhaps not, because they have 1.4s. It's an interesting question. I don't know, and I'm not trying to start a war here. I'm, it's just genuinely around the data, the engineering, the physics, of these mounts, but we can certainly see the results in a lens like the 50mm 1.8Z and this 85mm 1.8Z, both fabulous lenses. So going back to my point, yes, the 85mm 1.8 will make a wonderful portrait lens, as well as a streetscape lens. So good, so good. You, we can see here if we go into 100%, this is 64 ISO, 1 200th of a second, f1.8. And then we can bring the exposure up in post. Two stops, two stops is not a problem. We can see here that this is lovely and sharp no problem this is at 100 percent as we can see up here so looking great might just brighten that up a tad somewhere like that let's have add a bit of structure to it so it just feels even a bit more crunchy which i quite like that's what this is all about the lines versus the buka and i think that's a lovely result somewhere in there yeah somewhere there lovely oh this is a good one so it's really good for showing the sharpness here the focus point is here on the back. This is 100%, looks super sharp. Hand, super sharp, great. Really like that shot. Like the level of exposure. I like the blown out. Yeah, uh, could bring the highlights down. Yeah, oh, that's nice. This wall, I love the reporosity, the reflection, the light reflection. That's all just really gorgeous. And if you wanted to commercialize it, if you wanted to overblow it, you'd just do that to it, wouldn't you? And then it's like candy, candy in the store. Yep, like that one a lot, that's a good result. That's the 85 mil. And we can see chromatic aberration and all sorts of things are handled really well. can use it for whatever else you want. I doubt people would use it for sports. You tend to want to zoom so you can change your frame fast. Wildlife is the same. Photojournalists would use this sort of lens. As I said, streetscape and portrait are the most obvious uses. But I am not one to prescribe. A challenge for me is to actually grab a lens and take it out and work out how I can use it in ways that are not obvious. That's actually a joy to me to do that. I love seeing what I can get away with, which you wouldn't normally think of with a lens. So what else would you use an 85mm for? I'd love to know that. So this is a lens for all occasions. Every lens is a lens for all occasions. Just depends how creative you want to be and whether you want to use your feet to get closer, if it's a wide angle lens and the action's further away, or if you want to get further away because it's an 85mm, but you want to compress. You want to compress the image because that can be really interesting.
So today we are shooting on the Z6. It's the first time I've gone out and used it as my main camera to vlog with today. And just as some early Z6 observations before I do my review in a little while. Yes, it is sharper in 4K, I can see that already. If I was to put a number on it, I love putting numbers on things which maybe shouldn't have numbers. Maybe you can't really put a number on, but I would say it is something like 20% sharper than the Z7. Z7 looks great, but this is actually sharper, which is really, really cool. The other thing I've noticed already, I think at times like this, when I'm walking, I reckon the stabilization is a little bit better. And there might be some logic to that, 24 megapixel sensor, the processor has less work to do, the camera in general's got less work to do, so it can spend more time trying to stabilize ergonomically, handling, all that sort of stuff. It's all pretty much the same. Here we are on the Yarra River, and it's looking pretty sweet today. Vlogging today with 24 to 74 on the Z6, and I've got the 85 mil on the Z7. Say cheese. So this is shooting across the road, at night, handheld, 1 25th of a second, with DX. We go into 100%, let it render, and we can see all this stuff is still looking fantastic. So let me say that again. 85mm at 1.8, at 1 25th of a second, at 64 handheld, at DX, so it's sort of equivalent to a 130, and still looking spectacular. It just looks so good the quality here again at 1 25th of a second look at this super creamy buka in the background just gorgeous time this thing is looking great this is a beautiful ice cream cart that I stumbled across color temperature is clearly very confused on this one somewhere around there but that's great look at that handheld 1 13th of a second that's at 200 so let's just say that again, an 85mm lens, handheld at 1 13th of a second, here's the data, 1.8 wide open, and look at how sharp that is. We can see the little bits of rubber on the tyre, just looking so nice. It's all looking good. And this is the bottom left hand corner of the picture. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please share. It makes us all smarter. It's got to be a good thing. Please like it. Helps get the word out there and, and comment. I'd love to know what you're thinking. What are you thinking about Zs? What are you thinking about Es? EFs? All the other types of mounts in the universe. And of course, if you'd like to see more of me, if you haven't had enough of me just yet, if you click down, down, down here on the Matt Irwin, there's over 150 episodes you can watch right now about all sorts of things. All right, it's been amazing, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. I'll see you later. G'day, everybody. How are you going today? It is so good to see you. Well, today, we're going to talk about the 85mm Z 1.8. Now, I thought I would start with, is this a vlogging lens? And I want to tell you the four reasons why it's not. Reason number one, you have to hold it at full arm length to get minimum focus distance. So achieving minimum focus distance while vlogging is difficult. Reason number two, so getting that minimum focus distance and having your arm at full stretch makes you tired quickly. So probably not a good idea. Reason number three, if you're getting tired quickly, you're starting to get more and more movement. 
and a focal length like 85mm does not respond very well to movement, especially with a subject that's this close. So exaggerated movement. And a subject this close, reason number four, I love you guys, I know you love me, but I'm not sure we want to be this close to each other. So the 85mm is not a vlogging lens, but it is an amazing portrait lens and it is an amazing lens for photographing people in both stills and video. And beyond that, it's an absolute cracker. So let's dive in.